Hello and welcome to Take 53. I'm Carol Frausto. Today you will meet a man whose involvement in the Cupertino community has earned him the highest award that the Cupertino City Council gives a citizen. His name is Dean Skeels. In a moment we'll be talking with Dean, who is also a Parks and Recreation Commissioner. So please stay tuned for Take 53. My father taught me to steal and a pitch. Today I struck out seven and stole home. I think Dad would have been proud. Coach was. He said he wished Dad had taken as good care of himself as he did of me and Billy. Billy won't talk about it, and Mom can't stop crying. I don't know what it's like to have a heart attack, except I can see it hurts. It hurts bad. You can help prevent heart disease. We can tell you how. Five o'clock. People in a hurry, rushing for trains, for buses. Time to go home to family. But for this man and two million like him, there is no hurry, no schedule, nowhere to go. For them, the street is home, their only home, the homeless. Just because you can't help everyone doesn't mean you can't help someone. I, too, would like to say thank you to all that have uh, been involved in this celebration tonight. And uh, you can bet that I'm not going to quit. I'm going to keep going because I, I love Cupertino, and I'm going to do all I can for it. Thank you very much. Welcome back to Take 53. You just saw an excerpt from last October's Civic Service Awards. And joining me today is Dean Skeels. He is a current commissioner on the Parks and Recreation, and he's also a recipient of the City Award. Dean, thanks for joining me. Well, thank you very much. Pleasure to be here. Great. I'd like to start out by talking about some of the things that you're involved with as far as Parks and Recreation goes. How long have you been a commissioner? Well, I'm just into my second term now as a commissioner. I served one full four-year term, and then I have one year behind me in a second term, so five years as a commissioner with the Parks and Rec Department. See, what can you tell us a little bit of a background on maybe some of the general guidelines or the goals for the Parks and Recreation Commission? Well, what we try to do is to be an advisory board, to, like a body for the City Council, uh, making decisions as to how to use parks, uh, renovation and upkeep of some of the parks, uh, anything that has to do with open space, with recreation. Uh, also, um, renovating uh, new parks or school sites that have been made into parks as part of our uh, responsibility. And just in general, anything that uh, acts as an advisory to the City Council. Mm -hmm. So do you come up with recommendations and then go before the City this Council? This is basically what we do, is that we hear the, the testimony and the, the uh, work that's gone into it, and then we make a recommendation then to the City Council. I see. Do you think that maybe people in general kind of have a misconception of what parks and recreation is? I mean, I tend to maybe have thought of it as, you know, organizing swimming classes for kids. I think that people don't really understand what goes on in a community as far as that goes. Well, of course, one of the main things is that there is a, just a tremendous recreation program with classes and so on and different recreation activities which go on on an ongoing basis. Mm -hmm. So that is one phase of it. But also, uh, I, I think that a lot of people are really not aware of the number of parks that we have in Cupertino and the fine facilities that we do have and the, the opportunities that are available for them for leisure time and to really enjoy the outdoors and enjoy open space. Another aspect in that is probably that needs assessment survey that you recently completed. That was very interesting in that we found that uh, the citizens of Cupertino are in general they're satisfied with what's happening in the field of recreation but yet at the same time it almost seemed like there was a discrepancy in that they wanted more and uh, so there are lots of lots of factors in there that uh, that led us to think that the, the survey was really a good thing and we did find out a lot. Did you work with any outside organization to implement that? Um, that was assessment? done by a private organization. The, the survey was done professionally and so it, it was, was originally recommended by Parks and Recreation? It was recommended by the Parks and Recreation and then of course by the City Council to, to go ahead with it. It gives you some basis to for your actions that you for take? For the actions and of course that led to the uh, putting Proposition K on the ballot. And we'll get into that, we'll get a, little to that bit. a little later, I guess. How long have you lived in Cupertino? Well, my family and I have lived here for uh, 25 years, uh, married with uh, four children, mm -hmm. all grown children. 
We have two grandchildren. And you're an educator. I uh, spent 25 years here in Cupertino as a music teacher at Kennedy School. Mm -hmm. That's great. Now, do you think the fact that maybe since you've lived here for a long time that it has kind of influenced maybe your ideas on how open space or recreation should be handled since you've seen the growth of Cupertino? Well, that's it. I've seen Cupertino grow from the orchards uh, that it used to be to mm -hmm. what it is now. And uh, I've always been interested in this field of recreation and open space and so on. And uh, that's probably the reason that I was in education is because I like, uh, I like young people and kids. And yes, I think that uh, living here this long, I have developed some attitudes uh, as far as the city is concerned, which uh, I would hate to see this city become like many others are in the Bay Area, and that is completely wall-to-wall -wall houses and, car, uh, and, and uh, highways and so on. Mm -hmm. So I very definitely am interested in open space and recreational activities and leisure time activities for all the people of the city. Mm -hmm. I think that's what helps to make it a unique mm -hmm. community. You're right. Yeah. Um, what really got you interested in volunteering in the city? Well, I think this all started, and I think I've mentioned this before, when uh, then Mayor Reed Sparks appointed me to the uh, Bicentennial Committee back in 1975, 1976, when we celebrated the 200th anniversary of our country. And uh, I was very active in that committee at that time. And uh, that just kind of spearheaded me into, over the next few years, to think, well, gee, uh, why should I stop there and that I do have an interest in this? And then I, I guess it was in 1983, uh, 84, 83, when uh, there was a, an opening on the Parks and Recreation Commission that I mm -hmm. thought, this is what I'm really interested in, and I think I'll just become more involved. And of course, then over the last few years, it's, uh, it's, it's really kind of snowballed. It seems like a, some of your interests are focusing on the youth of the community. Do you have a special interest in that area? Well, I have been a member of the Cupertino Optimus Club for well over 20 years, and the motto of the Optimus Club is Friend of Youth. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is where we, this is what we do in the Optimus, Optimus organization, is uh, community projects that involve youth and to help youth. And uh, so I guess I am uh, more or less youth oriented in that way too. Well, I think as, they're very fortunate as well too. as being an, an educator. And, and, uh, Besides your five years that you've worked with um, Parks and Recreation, are there any other advisory bodies that you've worked with? Well, yes, I am on the um, uh, Bay Area Parks and Recreation Commissioners and Board Members Council. I'm a, I'm a board member there, and then I was just uh, well. It's been about a year ago that I was elected to the State of California Association oh. of uh, Parks and Recreation Commissioners and Board Members. These again are just really advisory boards uh, for the commissions within the cities. We don't have any direct effect on any city as such, but we do mm -hmm. try and help and coordinate some of the activities of the commissioners. So you take your expertise and well, help the and that's right, and, and uh, we uh, then just try and help them in any way that we can. Uh, for example, we put on workshops uh, designed for commissioners and board members, mm -hmm. and just things that uh, might come up within a city. Some of the problems, some of the the uh, topics that are uh, that are generally talked about and are, are uh, involved in um, parks and recreation commissioners. Is open space of one of those open big Open space, topics? of course, and parks. You know, that's just something the, that's been coming yeah, up a lot here in Cupertino. Open Cupertino. space, of course, is most important. Uh, we have in the in the Bay Area right now. We are, uh, or I shouldn't say we, but it does involve the entire Bay Area. There's what's called the Trail Ridge. Uh, uh, hiking trail, which eventually mm -hmm. will surround the entire Bay Area, starting the, the starting point right now is over in the East Bay, and it will go up into Marin County and back down through uh, San Mateo County, Santa Clara County, and back up around. And so it eventually will be 450 miles long of hiking trail. Oh, that's great. And so this is one of the things that uh, that the the Bay Area at this particular time is is working on. Well, that's fascinating. Mm -hmm. um, I'd like to take a break, but when we come mm -hmm. back, let's talk about open space in Cupertino. Okay. Good. We'll be right back on Take 53. Busting our heads just for you. My name is Vince. The job makes me sore. If you'd buckle up, I wouldn't do it no more. They call me Larry. I'm a dummy too. When you don't buckle up, the dummy is you. Buckle that belt. These are professional dummies. Do not attempt this at home. Buckle that, buckle that, buckle that belt. We got one thing to say, and we know we're not wrong. When you go for a ride, put your safety belt on. 
when friends don't stop friends from drinking and driving. Friends die from drinking and driving. Friends die from drinking and drinking and driving can kill a friendship. Welcome back to Take 53. I'm Carol Frausto and I'm talking with Parks and Recreation Commissioner Dean Skeels. We're going to start talking about open space. Now, elementary schools. Recently, um, I guess there have been some elementary schools that have been closed in the Cupertino uh, Unified Schools D District. How does the Parks and Recreation Commission or the city plan on um, approaching the sa that sudden availability of land? Well, the two most obvious ones have been Hoover School and Jollyman School. Mm -hmm. And uh, Hoover School, the, we retain the park, the open space, the turf part of it, and that has been developed now so that it's uh, at 100% uh, use now with, uh, as a park being used uh, for um, activities such as soccer and, well, ma mainly soccer. Mm -hmm. I guess it used to be used for softball too, but now it's primarily soccer. Plus, it's a nice neighborhood park, and that has been developed. Oh, uh, we're, the plans are uh, being worked on right now for Jollyman Park, which is basically the same thing. And there, there will be uh, a facility for Little League uh, uh, softball, or baseball, mm -hmm. and uh, the soccer, again, will be there. Plus, there'll be uh, play apparatus for young people, for the kids, and a picnic area for the adults. So Jollyman should be a, an asset to that particular community, too. What happens to the actual school? That's well, you see, site. in these two particular cases, they, they actually tore down the school, and, mm -hmm. and uh, the city did have the opportunity then to buy the open land, and that's, ah. what, that's what we did. So the, where the school actually was uh, has been developed into houses. I see. Now, so it works out good for us. And um, right at the present time, I'm not sure just what is available as far as schools right now, but this, of course, is an ideal situation if it can be, mm -hmm. if it can be accomplished. I see. Um, is the city um, unable to buy any schools? I mean, if a school comes up for purchase, does the city automatically have the right to, per to bid on that? Well, they do have a right. Uh, there's, uh, there's a law of some kind that says that the, a, pu a public agency such as the city does have uh, usually the first uh, chance to buy that particular piece of property. Uh, so uh, if the circumstances are right, then the city would like to look into it at least. Mm -hmm. What about, for example, with Calabasas School? Well, now, Calabasas School is actually in the city limits of San Jose, so we don't have any jurisdiction over that at all, you see. But that, uh, I, I guess, uh, uh, I'm not sure what the, what the, will be happening. But it uh, is a Cupertino It Unified is a Cupertino Union School, District, Union School uh, District, but not in the city limits of Cupertino. So we are limited to just the schools, of course, which fall within the city limits of Cupertino. I see. Um, with the high cost of land, are there, does the city face any problems with trying to purchase these from developers? Well, very much so. And of course, the, the cost of land is just going up and up and up. In the last six months, it's gone up, it seems like, almost 50 percent. Uh, mm -hmm just in the past few months uh, and so yes it is it's a very definite problem as far as the city is concerned and uh, the way I understand it right now that they're in the city budget there just really isn't a whole lot of money or any money available for any purchases right at the moment. I see. Um, now let's talk a little bit about Measure K. Um, I know that this recently just came up to the ballot that it really did win a majority vote, however it was defeated because it didn't receive the two-thirds vote. Correct. Maybe you could give us an overview and maybe what the reaction of the commission was on that defeat. Well, the, yeah, the commission was really very disappointed and I'm sure quite a few people within the city were disappointed that this didn't pass because what we felt like this would, in fact this is what it was designed for, was to give the city a cushion some uh, uh, a savings account, so to speak, so that if these pieces of property did become available, the city would then have the money to buy them through this bond issue. Uh, the school sites, of course, being one of the major things. There were also some examples given of some pieces of property that might become available. There's no indication that they will, but uh, mm -hmm. uh, Blackberry Farm, for example, and of course the, the Danza Racket Club has mm -hmm. been uh, people have, uh, we've been talking about that, but uh, 
Uh, this just would have given the city just some money to work with had these sites become available, and uh, now I just am not real sure what the, what the next step is. I see. Did um, the opposition came within the community for this type of a measure? Well, it seems like uh, just all of a sudden that the opposition just came out of nowhere right at the very last minute. Mm -hmm. I'm sure that most everybody that was in favor of Proposition K felt like it was uh, that it had a good chance of passing, but again, any time that you have to have two-thirds majority, 66 percent, that's hard to get. I didn't really get. understand. Why did they have to receive a two-thirds well, majority Well, I guess on this, this is just the way bond issues work. I, uh, that's just the way, the way it is on that. Mm -hmm. So uh, with that in mind, uh, it, it did get a little touch and go there at the end, and we did begin to wonder if it was going to, we figured that we would get the majority, but to get that two-thirds majority was mm -hmm. a hard thing, and of course, obviously, we didn't And we didn't there was a lot it. of questions yeah, afterwards. We did get a good, clear majority of people who were in favor of it, but uh, not not enough to make it Do you it have any good. ideas of what you think reasons are why it didn't pass? Well, it's I think, and I think others think the same way, that uh, a lot of the public was just really misinformed or just really didn't understand mm -hmm. what the purpose of Measure K was for and how the money was to be used. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that some thought that, that possibly that money would be used all at once right now and that their taxes would just automatically go up and that we were going to buy this and this and this and that's really not what it was designed for. Mm -hmm. it, like I've said before, it was just a, a savings account or a cushion in, in case these pieces of property did come up. So I think probably misinformation on the part of the residents had a lot to do with it. There was a factor with quite a few people who felt like they just didn't want to pay more taxes. And of course, mm -hmm. this was going to affect your tax bill by the amount of $60 per uh, $100,000 of assessed valuation, mm -hmm. which for some wouldn't have amounted to much, but uh, for others it would amount to quite a bit. That gets us back to needs assessment, which found residents wanting open space. Uh -huh. And then we come to this defeat. What's next for the commission? Well, I don't know. I think we'll still use the needs assessment thing to see where, see what the people want. But we're, we are at, at more or less a standstill right now as to how to finance some of these other projects. Uh, mm -hmm. I think what's going to happen with the um, Proposition K is possibly, I've heard that the council would like to go into the precincts and find out a little bit more as to how people reacted within certain precincts of the, within the community so mm -hmm. that maybe some assessment can be made within various neighborhoods and, and the precincts in, within the city of Cupertino. I see. That's a good way to use mm -hmm. that. Um, is the com your commission planning on using the needs assess assessment in any other way? Right now, yes. We have a committee uh, working on, uh, in fact, one of the, the the main area of, uh, on the needs assessment was hiking and walking. Mm -hmm. This is where most people spend their time and uh, are what they're mostly interested in. So we do have a committee that's working on uh, detailing maybe some trails and some hiking uh, situations within the city of C Cupertino and also in the uh, immediate uh, vicinity, maybe not mm -hmm. just directly in the city, but... Is that hiking trail you were talking about? Anywhere? Well, that would uh, that would be probably a little distant from the actual city of Cupertino, but it is a possibility. Mm -hmm. But you see, we do have the uh, uh, Mid-Peninsula open space region, which is close by, and then uh, in the Saratoga area, the uh, Fremont Older uh, mm -hmm. space. So there are hiking places there, and there are a lot of things to do. So yes, we are, uh, we're, we're working on this. There's a committee that's working, and we should have some results of that probably around the first part of the year. I know another big project has got to be the community center. You can just in community update center, us uh, on what's going on. Right. The, uh, the community center, in fact, we have just recently had the official groundbreaking ceremony for the community center. And um, this has been a long haul for some. Uh, the committee, of which I was a member, we've been actively working for about three years now. and. Uh, there have been quite a few things that needed to be done as far as the design and the, the use of the facility and so on. And so we were really happy this morning, uh, this morning, it was when it was, to uh, have uh, uh, been able to break ground for that. And we feel like that this is a long needed facility in the city of Cupertino in that it will house, it will be able to accommodate a lot of the city functions, uh, city things that we do, also other community mm -hmm. uh, functions and also be available for private parties as well. And it will also house the um, Parks and Recreation Department offices. Mm -hmm. uh, the Cupertino Community Services will have their offices in there, wow, and, and they're really looking forward to that. That's yeah. going to be quite a big thing for them. And also, also the uh, Historical Society will have a, 
museum. Great. So we're really looking forward to it, and it will really be an elegant building and a real showpiece for the city of Cupertino. We're looking forward to construction starting very shortly, and then about a year or a little over a year to actually complete it. Where's the actual location of the The location is uh, off of Stelling. Mm -hmm. uh, between Alves and Christensen, which of course it is a piece of property that's adjacent to Memorial Park now. It's connected to Memorial Park. So it's and kind of so in it the will, senior center yeah, in that it, area? It'll be down. It's more towards the ballpark and the uh, tennis courts I see. of the existing Memorial Park. So. Well, you mentioned earlier that you serve on a Bay Area Parks mm -hmm. and Recreation right. and also um, state parks and recreation. How does Cupertino rate with other um, cities? Well, I have become a little bit prejudiced in just mm -hmm. the past year or so since I've been on these boards. Mm -hmm. And uh, I really, though, seriously feel like Cupertino is really doing a fine job in terms of parks and recreation, both in the, the kinds of things that we do for recreational activities, the classes and and this and the, the parks and the open space and so on. Mm -hmm. I think a lot, of, in fact, I don't think I know a lot of this success goes to our very fine director of Parks and Recreation, Mr. Steve Dowling and his staff. They do just a tremendous job and I'm very proud and uh, when we have uh, either Bay Area or state meetings, it seems like I always end up talking about Cupertino and people do listen because I think they're almost envious of what the good things are that we have going for us here in Cupertino. It's very lucky to be able to re represent a city right. like Cupertino. It's, it's, it's great. Uh -huh. Now, um, we talked about um, the community center. Is there any other long-range plans that maybe you foresee for the commission getting into, or do you got your hands dug in already on the community center? Well, uh, the community center is uh, pretty much on its way right now as mm -hmm. far as just construction and so on. And then probably a year from now, we'll have to start thinking about how it's actually going to be used and mm -hmm. what it's going to be used for as uh, far Is as the commission going to be involved in the what goes on within the community center itself? Uh, to a certain degree, mm -hmm. again, in, advi in an advisory manner. But mm -hmm. We don't make those final decisions, mm -hmm. but we sure help in some of them. You had a big hand in putting it together, right, though. Yeah, yeah. Did you also work out with on the design of the building and things the, like that? We had a committee, you see, which was made up of uh, some staff people here at the City Hall and uh, council members and myself. And then also we had a couple of uh, neighborhood residents from both Christensen and the Commons, which is on Al's Way, and they contributed a lot to the design and the, the things that went into the community center. So it was a, a cross-representation of all of the different segments of Cupertino. That's good, and you have the citizens in there. Citizens so helped there. a lot, right, mm -hmm. plus the expertise of the staff and the and the council members. Uh -huh. And the commission. And people. the commission, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll take a break, and when we come back, we'll talk about Dean Skills and his recent award. Hello, I'm George Papard. Suppose you're eating with a friend and he suddenly begins to choke. Would you know what to do? If he can cough, leave him alone. Don't pound on his back. But if he can't cough, talk, or breathe, or if he only makes a high-pitched wheezing sound, you must take action. Here's what to do. Move behind your friend and put your hands like this, right between the navel and the rib cage. Then pull sharply in and up as many times as necessary. What's happening is this. The food is acting like a cork in a bottle. When you pull in on the stomach, you force the trapped air to pop the cork out. You can even do this to yourself, using the back of a chair or your own fist. It's simple, but it can save lives. The Will Rogers Institute has a free booklet about this technique and the variations you should use for pregnant women. It also shows how to reduce the chances of choking, especially for children. For your free copy, write the Will Rogers Institute, White Plains, New York. Well, I feel like Cupertino is by far the best place that there is to live. Uh, through my affiliation with Parks and Rec on the state level, I've talked to a lot of people in different communities throughout the state of California, and I'm convinced that this is by far the best place. And I'm just interested in doing all that I can to preserve open space, to uh, see that people have leisure time, leisure activities, and uh, just do the best that I can for the city of Cupertino. Dean, our viewers just saw a glimpse of the recent Civic Service Awards, and you won one of the highest honors that the city bestows upon a citizen for their years of service. You've got to be proud of yourself. I was there, and I was, you know, it was very 
touching moment. Now, is something like this, has it been motivational, or this accomplishment? Well, it certainly has, and, and I've told a lot of people it really was a surprise that uh, it's something that I've seen happen because I've been on the committee that selected these people as a, as a commissioner, chairman of the commission, and so on. And so when it happened to me, it really was a surprise, and I really felt uh, very proud and very honored that uh, the city would bestow this honor on me. And uh, it, yes, motivational, it really is. I really would like to uh, continue, in fact, I, I will be continuing to serve the, the community of Cupertino and I uh, hope that uh, in the near future that I'll even be able to serve in maybe even a, a, a different way than I am right now. But oh, I, no. I really am quite, <laughs> uh, quite pleased and proud that uh, I did receive the award. That's great. Congratulations Thank on that. You. Um, what other things are you involved with besides parks and recreation? I know that takes up a lot of your time, I can see, but there's got to be other things you've... Well, I've been, uh, my family and I, my wife and I in particular, have been very active with the Cupertino Union Church uh, mm -hmm. over the past years. Uh, I've been uh, director of music at the church for the past 20 years, and uh, my wife has uh, been the, the director of the youth choir for almost that many years and so that has taken quite a bit of our time and of course it's something that we both enjoy doing and just the association with the church people and the uh, relating to uh, those kind those people through music is very gratifying for both of us. That's great. And um, one thing that we didn't get to earlier that I wanted to mention was mm -hmm. that maybe tell me a little bit about the renovation of Somerset Park. Somerset Park, right. This uh, is kind of a unique situation as far as I I can see it. Here's a group of people who uh, in a neighborhood who thought that they had a problem with their little park. It's only just a bit over one acre, but uh, mm -hmm. they felt like there were some security problems, some safety problems, and uh, other things that uh, just needed to be attended to. So they as a group came to City Hall and, and uh, complained that uh, they'd like to have something done, and it came in front of the Parks and Recreation Commission, and we agreed with them. and. Uh, the staff uh, has then uh, done some things about it, and uh, so it's a case really of uh, people of the community coming to City Hall and really getting some results. The citizens because, recommending yeah, to the commission. And, uh, <laughs> and we in turn agreed with them, and so mm -hmm. some work is being done and will be done to renovate uh, Somerset Park, so it's a little bit nicer to um, to go to up in that neighborhood. That's great. Mm -hmm. When does the Parks and Recreation Commission meet? Well, we meet just uh, monthly. We meet once a month on the first Thursday of each month. Is the public invited? It's public is certainly invited. There have been many times when we're there all by ourselves, but we do <laughs> take care of our business. So if anybody's interested in just seeing the activities of the Parks and Recreation Commission or have a desire maybe in the future to be part of an organization like this, mm -hmm. we urge them to come to our meetings and just see what happens. That's great. I'd really like to congratulate you again on your city award and your hard work in the community. I'm well, sure it's much appreciated. Thank you very much. You're welcome. I'd like to thank my guest today. His name is Dean Skeels, and he's a recent city award winner and a Parks and Recreation Commissioner. I'm Carol Frausto, saying please join me as I continue to f focus on the issues that shape your community in Cupertino on Take 53.